Hello there. Well, uh, we're now on the 48th day of lockdown, I think, and it's the 3rd of May. So we're going to have a look at the the van. Uh, it's a nice, damp, wet day today, but I want to look at uh, seeing how I can take the bumper off uh, the front, and I'll explain why as I'm doing it. So the front of the bumper is held on, it seems, by these two bolts. There's one bolt here with a flat end and basically goes in there. And the idea is, is that the end of the bolt is, is well the end of the screw rather is uh, square and uh, you've got a little screw on the end which means you have to put your hand underneath the, the mud guard to unscrew it um, blindly. So that side's okay, okay, but the other side, some person who was probably the person who replaced the engine you know, back in uh, October 2018 when my van had to go back to the dealers. Uh, I'll look in another video where I talk about the fact that the engine blew and the engine had to be replaced. So obviously to put the new engine in, they had to remove the bumper and on this side if I put my if I can put my hand underneath the mud guard you oh, it's a bit out of focus you turn the screw well a whole lot of turns because there's nothing to stop it from whoops you fell backwards um, there's nothing to stop it from uh, biting so we're gonna have fun taking that one off so excuse the dirtiness of the inside of my van. Uh, we have a lot of trees and there are bits of in the well, in the cabin on the floor. So to open the, the bonnet, which is what we have to look at next, is that you need to pull the lever which is above the that's the throttle or the accelerator, sorry. And it's above the accelerator. There's a little plastic handle which I'm not going to be able to show you because it's not going to be very possible but pull on that it's underneath just above the accelerator pedal so seeing the catch to open the bonnet is above the accelerator pedal and uh, it's just uh, quite easy you just stick your hand underneath the bonnet and lift this up and open the bonnet um, I've had a bit of a camera failure so I'm having to film this again uh, it's one of those things I think you have to learn for uh, YouTube. Uh, so i had been waffling away for probably about five minutes and suddenly realised that although the camera was saying record, for some reason it is frozen. Um, I've got a camera that has a mind of its own. Um, it's a reconditioned one, so it's obviously something underlying that is failed, which means that sometimes I have to take the battery out to switch it off and it seems that uh, uh, it, it become froze and normally in that case I set the battery out to switch it off uh, only it wasn't recording so basically um, I've got to remember what I was saying before uh, anyway it doesn't matter um, so I spoke about the bolts a bit back for you a few minutes ago um, so you've got that one I've taken out okay the other side I presume when they replaced the engine in uh, October, September, October, um, my mouth's not working properly today. Um, September, October 2018, I had the engine changed because it blew, well, the original engine blew and they replaced it with a second hand one. Um, they, meaning the dealer who sold me the van in the first place. Um, I think I'll talk about that in another video, so I'm not going to go on about it now. So basically they've damaged the, the hole, or the square hole where the flat screw goes into it. And that means that it's turning around and it's difficult to unscrew. But I'm sure I'll be able to get it done. So basically the idea is to take this bumper off. And the bumper I found is held on by those two screws and riveted to this plate that holds the catch. It's basically got a plate behind that black thing there, which is welded to the, the bar that goes in front 
goes the front, goes across the front of the van, just here. Um, and because it's welded to that, and the catch is bolted to it, so nice bolts there. So that will be easy to take off on the, if I needed to. Didn't need to change the catch, but not so for the bumper. The bumper has got rivets, and I presume I'm thinking they're recent rivets because that means we've changed the engine. Because otherwise, I've no way of really knowing because the engine is second hand and just as mucky, dirty, and a little bit rusty as the original. Um, but it done less uh, less kilometres, so anyway, got to be a bit of benefit to something, I suppose. Um, so yeah, we've got rivets there. So I think I'm enough to try to drill those out. Probably somebody screaming at me now, saying, "No, no, no, you need to do it another way." But I don't know how to do it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna drill those out so I can take the bumper off. Now he's probably asking me, "Why am I taking the bumper off? Why do I just leave it on?" Um, well, the reason I want to take the bumper off is because, well, first of all, it's damaged. Um, if I'll show you the damage at the bottom here, just move the screen so I can see what I'm filming. Okay, so if you look at the bottom there, you can see there's a big chunk missing out of it. It's probably from uh, uh, in in France. You have like these big bollards, the sort of like a curbstone standing on the side of the pavement lengthways along the along the inside of the kerb basically uh, it's basically a concrete lump and you've got several of them across the um, pavements um, well, along the edge of the pavements to be more exact uh, to stop people from parking on the pavement so yeah it's quite easy to catch them and it looks like someone's done that with the van and obviously because it's all made out of plastic it's not very strong and they've gone bang into the concrete and took a chunk out of the front and in doing so they've to the side here can't really see it very well <coughs> yeah you can just about see it there's a crack there they've cracked it there and underneath is a bit missing you can just about see it it's a bit miss well it's not missing it's sort of like it's, it's about to go um oh yeah they've really filmed underneath anyway um one day I probably will. So the idea is to cut the plastic. Now, getting a straight line is going to be fun um, because it's all um, ripply and bendy and you know mouldy and whatever. So the idea would be to somehow cut a bit out of this here to take out the damaged bits and then replace it with a, a metal grill which I've bought. I uh, bought a roll of grill that are used for it's the sort of thing used for the these these voitures sans permis, cyclomotor, um, vehicle sans permis, whatever you want to call them. So basically to repair that. Then I thought, well, to do that I'm going to have to take the bumper off because I'll need to work from the inside and also to try to strengthen the bottom uh, where it's all split uh, by putting some sort of, I don't know, um, uh, plastic strip or something like that or something substantial to hold it all together for now um, and in doing that at the same time I could always do some soundproofing behind the bumper and stick some on the inside here um, so yeah that would be a good advantage but ultimately I need to repaint this black um, so I've got some spray paint for plastic I've also got some varnish for plastic, so it, it could be okay, we'll see. The problem is if I paint it black, then you have this panel here, this triangular panel at the front, which will be grey. And I'd like to perhaps paint this black too, but I'll have to do some masking I think, and take the bonnet off. So that's another thing, and then if I'm running away with myself, really running away with myself, I want to paint the whole thing eventually. In fact, what I'm going to do is just the bottom panels, just here. I'm going to give them a good clean, um, give them a good clean, and then varnish them. So yeah, so that's the painting project to do. So inside this, you've got obviously. You've got the um, subframe which I spoke about, which is this here. 
and the subframe basically um, holds the engine in and all of this assembly together the wings, the bumper and so on but also attaches to an assembly in the cab which I've probably shown you before on the inside here so that's the insurance sticker so you've got it so you've got poles either side so basically the subframe at the front I'm not sure whether the, the whole thing's attached whether the, the, the cage that makes up the cab is actually attached to the subframe that holds the engine uh, I know in the, in the cars, the XM cars um, the subframe for the engine is separate and then the rest of the car is sort of it's not really a, a cage made out of tubular steel it's sort of moulded steel to fit the panels on so it's not tubular steel inside the cars probably the older ones uh, they, they do have tubular steel but it's like uh, basically um, I suppose a bit like a Citroen DS where you've got the, the metal frame and then the panels fit onto it um, I think I prefer the DS to be on this but uh, anyway um, so this this, lo this lorry, this van I'm getting ahead of myself this van has uh, well, this subframe at the front and possibly attached to the, the one inside the cage and at the back you've got a ladder frame um, straight out the back which holds the um, in this case the back of my van on it or in some other cases uh, a pickup uh, back, you know, a pickup truck back. So another idea of taking the bumper off would be to give these chassis members or subframe members, whatever you want to call them, a good old clean because they're covered in muck. You can just about see the, the bell housing for the centrifuge on the CVT transmission. And then there you've got the chassis member which is sort of how can I explain it? Well, it's to the top of the bell housing there. Uh, you've got the bell housing and a little bit of metal that goes across. Uh, just there. And that's the chassis member there, at the bottom. And it's basically a square. It goes out, out the front and then back in again. A bit like a 2CV, I suppose. Uh, there the comparisons end. Um, so yeah, that needs to be clean. So to take the bumper off would be a good advantage to be able to you know sort of pressure pressure clean the pressure pressure hose sorry that's the word I'm looking for pressure hose the chassis and perhaps give it a, a bit of a coat of paint uh, at the same time so I've got lots to do so we'll start with doing the riveting or deep riveting so rivets have gone Made a bit of bit too too big a hole there, but I can always sort that out later with a washer washer or something. At least it's on this side and not on on that side. So that's the back of the rivet. Not the most brilliant of rivets, I suppose. And I've drilled the front out. So the next problem was actually. Having unscrewed this bolt here and the one the other side and got rid of the rivets, the wing wouldn't move. So I went online to have a look and see what the method was to to remove it. And if you can see here, if I pull this out like that, you see, um, you've got this horrible black stuff um, which is glue. And everything's glued together on this thing. Uh, but I didn't realise that there'd be glue holding the front off so it's all this stuff I've got to get rid of somehow um, before I put it back on again but luckily I have um, some tube of this glue a tube of this glue, sorry, rather so that I can actually uh, put it on properly so we'll have to see how it goes you ready for the surprise? Here we go. Da da. So, as you can see, uh, the bumper's off. The engine's exposed, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of work to do. Unfortunately, my camera keeps freezing, and uh, 
when it does that uh, it looks like it's filming and suddenly stops and I'm waffling away showing you things and suddenly I find it's not filming so hopefully this time around I'm filming something so as you can see the um, Kubota engine is there in all its glory and then you've got the, the subframe either side oh, part of the subframe either side it goes from the bar at the front there and you see that it goes up and it holds the suspension in place with the wishbone okay so it's quite simple really and you've got uh, another another um, uh, member across there at the back of the engine one at the front and there you go so all that needs to go clean because it's covered in god knows what so a good opportunity to give everything clean and see what sort of state it's in and if there's any painting needs to be done to try to preserve it a bit more providing things aren't too rusty then uh, we can do that i've already seen a piece of rust there look so that needs painting over, cleaning and so on. In fact it's not in too bad a state really, I was expecting a lot worse considering it's all exposed to the elements and then the only thing that's protecting the underneath of this thing is the, this plastic panel at the front. So you can see it's all pretty weak at the bottom, it's all broken and split. It's going to have to be renovated somehow. They've thoughtfully attached the bottom part to part of the chassis with a cable tie. I, I presume that's uh, their method of uh, making it look like everything's secure because the bottom of the, the bumper here is very wobbly. Probably made to be so because at least it just splits and breaks. Um, parts that are made to be replaced are all made out of plastic. So but I don't want to replace this because it's going to cost me over 100 euros to buy a new bumper, possibly more. Seen them advertised for different prices, um, anywhere from 80 euros up to about 160, 170. I think 80 euros is probably wish, wishful thinking, but uh, anyway. So you see the computer engine there. If you need to change the oil filter, well, you've got to take the bumper off. So there it is. If you need to check the dipstick, you've got to have a very long arm. You can torsionate yourself round the back of the bumper to do it. So there is the dipstick, I wonder where it was. Um, not very familiar with this uh, engine uh, or mechanics in general. So yeah, um, it's, it could be worse. It could be worse but you know it just needs a good clean up, good clean up with pressure, wa pressure hosing and then I can think about putting some paint onto the bits that need it and then hopefully it'll be okay for a little bit. Might as well do it while I've got the bumper off. Another thing I've, I've actually read up on or looked up on on uh, YouTube is when you have to change the belt on the CVT transmission. Um, I think, well, that's the bell housing and the centrifuge inside. And I think what you have to do is you have to jack it up Providing you know this bumper's in in the way because I've taken it off now, so I've got full access. But if this bumper's in situ, it means that you have to to jack it up on one side, take the front wheel off, and then put a long uh, bolt. What would you say? Long socket. Your socket set. You've got a long socket to be able to unbolt the bell housing on the centrifuge. To be able to change the the belt well that's what I've um, seen so which sounds a bit strange because then it means uh, taking everything apart and putting it back together again so if somebody knows an easier way of changing a belt on a CVT transmission then you'll have to let me know so I've not a clue so it's still videoing it's still counting down so I think we'll bring things to an end there and I'll do another instalment where I start to do everything else with painting the, or repairing rather, and then painting the bumper, giving the whole thing a clean. In fact, I think the first video after this one will be giving everything a clean. 
and then seeing where we stand uh, but I'm not going to do that today so there you go that's the state of play at the moment so thanks a lot for watching and taking the time to be patient with my fiddling and fuddling around with the video because I'm not sure how this is going to look when I come to edit it together or edit even edit it e even together <laughs> um, so anyway yeah feel free to look in and have a, have a check on the videos and to see how I progress with uh, getting things done and indeed if you own the same sort of vehicle preferably a mega van or a D truck then feel free to, to drop a comment on the uh, comments board of the video so that we can uh, have a little discussion about uh, all the different things you can do and all the things you need to do anyway take care of yourselves and I'll see you in another video take care bye bye